everybody. So today I am going to be talking about another co-worker who stalked and harassed me for over a year. Her name is Madeline, but everybody at the job called her Maddie. Now I want everybody to remember that when all this was happening, I was still working at Subway and they were creating fake accounts using other people's profile pic and fake numbers to do all of this. On June 25th at 10.14 p.m., my phone goes off. And I found that really weird because nobody ever, and I mean ever, calls me at 10.14 p.m. I was at home with my family. My boyfriend and I were in our bedroom watching a movie. My parents were at home. My sister was at home with her family. All my friends, they have families. They were at home with their families. So I found it really weird that my phone was going off at 10.14 p.m. So I looked at my phone and this was the phone number that was calling me and I'm going to insert a picture of it right here. And one, I did not recognize the number and two, I do not know anybody that lives in Pawtucket. My thought process was, what if this was an emergency? What if a family member or a friend of mine was stuck on the side of the highway? What if they lost their phone? What if, you know, their phone died and they're using somebody else's phone to try and get in contact with me? I'm over here thinking, like, what if it was an emergency and somebody was calling me because they needed me? And I was like, Mm, but I still didn't recognize the number. I didn't know whose number that was. So I went ahead and answered my phone anyway, just in case. And I said, hello. And a girl on the other end of the phone um, says to me, is this Cindy Nicolazzi? And I'm like, yes, who is this? And she goes, Freaky Bob is downstairs waiting for you with a package. And I was like, who is this? And she goes, Freaky Bob. And I'm like, who is this? And she goes, Freaky Bob is downstairs waiting for you with a package. And I was like, okay, who are you? And she just kept like repeating herself. So then I said, I never ordered a package. I didn't order a package. And she got so serious. And she said to me, you better be careful, you better watch your back, and she hung up the phone. So I got up from our bed, and I looked at my boyfriend, and I said to him, babe, I just got the weirdest and threatening phone call saying that a freaky bob was downstairs waiting for me with a package, and that I better be careful, and I better watch my back. My boyfriend jumped up from our bed, and he said, I'm gonna go check it out, and he told me to lock the door, and I locked the door and I ran to my daughter's bedroom. I saw that she was sleeping and she was okay. And then I ran to my son's bedroom and I saw that he was sleeping and he was okay. And I immediately dialed 911. So I told them what just happened and if they would be able to send a officer to my building to check things out. So they did dispatch an officer to my building and they were here in like less than five minutes. And they came and they checked around the building. They checked my car. They checked underneath my car. They, um, they checked my gas tank. They even checked my mailbox. And everything was good. The next day, I went to the police department to try and file something. But because I didn't have any information except the phone number, there was not much that they could do. So the officer asked me, do you want me to call the number? And I said, yes. And he called that number multiple times. And he came back to me and he said, hey, listen, I called this number multiple times and it doesn't even have a voicemail. It just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. So it's like a spook number. And I said, okay. So whoever called me that night, they used one of those apps that you can create fake numbers and call people from. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I walked away. On July 19th, I was clocking out of work. When I was done clocking out, I turned around 
and Maddie was standing right behind me waiting to clock into work. And again, another co-worker that I was standing right in front of them and they didn't say not one word to me, didn't say anything to me and acted like everything was normal. Five minutes after I got fired from my job on July 19th, Maddie confessed and admitted, and I'm going to put it down below right here so that you guys can see it, that she was the one that called me that night. So that's it. That's that. Now, I never ever gave Maddie my phone number. I never gave her my phone number. Nobody at that job, I never gave them any of them my phone number the only one that had my phone number because she's the store manager and she needs to have our phone numbers was Kristen but she, Mad, uh, Maddie can never ever say that I personally gave her my phone number because I didn't the only time I seen any of any of my former co-workers was when we were at work outside of work the there was nothing there was no relationship there nothing so yeah, that's it. Mwah.